Hello there, and welcome back to more Avedon, the Black Fortress. Uh, last time we took a bit of a look around the Black Fortress. Not a very detailed look around, um, but as much as our rank permitted us, uh, as you remember, Hart Miranda gave us a badge of sorts that, uh, that tells you, uh, well, it doesn't tell you anything, it's just, uh, it's, it's for all the areas that you can go into, okay, so you guys can read this, uh, it's about the Kava, which is an area in this game's world, uh, you can pause the game if you'd like to, uh, pause the game, you can pause the video if you'd like to read it. Now, we have our orders, and our orders are to go to the Kava to uh, speak to a dragon, um, but I am sure, very, very sure, that we're going to be meeting uh, some other folks uh, that have some side quests for us. If this game is anything like its, uh, its successor, I'm sure we'll find something. Your body reforms next to a stone pylon. You spend a few minutes on your knees hunched over and gagging as you recover from the effects of being magically flung across Linnaeus. You hope that this gets less painful with experience. You doubt it. Eventually, you rise to your feet. The pylon is behind you, ready for your use. Okay, so we can use this pylon to recover your vital our vitality. Uh, and then we can return to Avedon using it. You stumble out into the hot sun after the cool and darkness of Avedon, hello there, get out, get out of there. After the, uh, where was I? After the cool and darkness of Avedon, the hot, dry air of the deserts of the Kava immediately starts to wear you down. Sweat rolls down your face, and grit starts to work its way into your armor. The ground is arid and dusty. The only plant life visible nearby is in the form of huge thickets of cacti. Cacti not cactus, uh, bearing vicious thorns. The dragon, Zethron, picked a home truly inhospitable to humans. When you emerge, someone shouts to you. A woman is waiting for you by the path to the north. Okay. Oh, look, there's an eye that lives here. Tamaria, a middle-aged woman, aged, of the Kava approaches you. The skin on her hands and face looks like dark leather, the result of many years out in the desert. She approaches you with great calm and confidence. Since you are a hand of Avedon, this level of fearlessness means that she is either a fool or a fellow servant of the Black Fortress. It is the latter. She nods to you. Welcome, hand. I am I, Tamaria, watcher of the pylon. I am here to guide you in whatever mission you are undertaking. I can provide precious information before you set out, and, since so few have come from Avedon of late, I have plenty of time to spare. I could use some information. Uh, I'm new here. Uh, never been to the Kava. So yeah. She nods. I would be happy to help. What do you need to know? Tell me about the town. She looks at the town to the northwest. That is Goldcrag, a small town out in the wilds of the desert. It would be of minimal importance uh, to the pact if it wasn't for the fact that there are dragons nearby. There are pest problems, of course, mainly wretches. How do the dragons affect the town? They don't attack, if that is what you were wondering. Uh, this is where visitors stay uh, and get food on the way to see Zethron and ask for help. Without those travelers, nobody would ever have heard of Goldcrag. Why is it called Goldcrag? There used to be mines here. There are still a few out there, but most of them were played out before the Black Age. How will they treat me there? She laughs. <laughs> They're good. Loyal servants of the pact. The leader there is Overseer Levent. Levent and your main problem will be getting him to stop offering you assistance. Uh, good and servile as Redbeard likes it. Tell me about the wretches. The wretch lands are to the west. It is the one of the far lander, uh, far, one of the far lands where we allow wretches to live without interference. But they often emerge and cause trouble elsewhere, and 
then they must be dealt with. Usually it is soldiers that hunt them down when somebody when someone begins to lead and organize and, and equip the wretches, however, Avedon must be involved. I have other questions. I need supplies. And you want them from me? I am no quartermaster. You should travel into Goldcrag. Merchants there will give you a fair deal. They know how dangerous it would be to do otherwise. <laughs> Can I just take what I want? She shakes her head. It would be unwise. The job of Avedon is to make the pack more stable. Looting and theft will invite rebellion and thus anger Redbeard. So I would behave. All right. Oh, whoops. I had another question. Hey, come back here. Uh, how long have you been here? I have been stationed here for many a year. She looks around at the parched land and the vicious thickets of cacti. It is Redbeard's pleasure that I serve in my homeland. Is this where you wanted to be stationed? She smiles wryly. Why would anyone choose to expend their short lives anywhere else? I may have been on the wrong end of a political disagreement before I was sent here, but I'm sure that I'm sure that was not involved. But this is where Redbeard sent me, and this is where I will serve. What do you do besides assist hands? I watch. I gather information. I carry messages directly from the dragons to Redbeard and back. It is the work of an eye. Are you from the Kava? I am. I am more pleasant part of it. Most of the Kava is not so arid. Some areas even have plants that aren't cacti. That's all for now. Thanks to Maria. So, uh, let's, uh, let's take a look around here and see what we can find here. So to the west is the... Uh, far to the west, I, I would surmise, far to the west, that way, um, are the uh, wretches we have to uh, deal with for the dragon, I suppose. You enter the town of Goldcrag. It is not a large settlement. There are a meeting hall and a barracks in the center of town. You can see shops in and into the north and a few quiet, quiet buildings to the south. Normally, in this remote arid land, you would only find a small you would only find small clusters of nomads. However, the people who come out here to see the dragon and try to purchase its aid need a place to sleep and get supplies for the journey back. When you enter, a few people out in the hot sun nearby look very nervous. The presence of a hand of Avedon always causes fear. Everyone wonders uh, what they have done wrong recently and how much you know about it. And Avedon does all it can to encourage that paranoia. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, wow. Overseer Levent. Or Levent. Or Levent. I think it's Levent. There's no accent on it. Uh, but then again, English doesn't use accents. <laughs> You are approached by an elderly man of the Gava. His robes are long, brightly colored, and immaculate. Though they are rapidly picking up dust from the road, he must not come outside much. For you, however, he made an exception. He greets you with a broad, fake smile. A Hanan boy from Avedon. Uh, hand, if I guess correctly. We are honored and pleased to meet you in our humble town. I am Overseer Levent. And I wanted to reach you personally here before the stone. Welcome to Goldcrag. Anything we can do for you, we will. Sweat begins to bead on his forehead. He glances briefly at the city hall, clearly eager to return to its shelter. I'm here to see the dragon Zethron. He nods. I have heard that the mighty dragon is dissatisfied. Wretches, yes? Such pests. We have had increased difficulties with them lately. Perhaps I can be of assistance? For a moment, Levin's smile seems genuine. We have asked, and Avedon has provided. We are most grateful. What else would you like to know about? You're an overseer? He nods and brushes some dust off his sleeve. And there's the title of one who leads a village or a small town. I was appointed to direct affairs and to make judgments of law. I am an interpreter of the stone code, both master and servant. Uh, so you're uh, you're the judge here. Yes, I have memorized all of the code, both the words on the stones and the expanded version on the scrolls in this hall. I pass judgment and declare punishments. You may have seen the stocks in the place of execution. 
The law is harsh, but it is fixed. All know what is expected of uh, expected of them, even me. Hmm. I haven't seen enough of your laws to say. A diplomatic response. I hope you become more familiar with them. When you are in our lands, you should obey them, even though you serve Avedon. But what else would you like to know? I require assistance. Hmm. I need information. I could tell you much, but you would be better served by speaking to Itamaria. Near where you arrived, she knows all I do, and more. Supplies? Then talk to our merchants. They will be eager, eager to help you. They can be found in the north end of town. I will speak with them. Uh, tell me more about Goldcrag. A modest town, as you can see, in a harsh part of the Kava. We have little land that can be farmed, and yet, thanks to the dragons, we have value for the pact and for travelers, and thus, honor has been given to us. How many dragons are near here? One, currently, Zethron. Sometimes there are more. They move around. They come here when they have to, the urge to grow their hordes so that the sages and leaders of the pact can bribe them. You don't fear the dragons? We do not. Goldcrag is part of the pact. If the dragons attacked us, they would attack all of the pact. They are not foolish enough to want war. However, it was not always thus. Once the dragons hunted us at will. Hunted at will, sorry. These are better days. What honor have you received? Because of our increasing wealth and the attention of Avedon has given us, given us, the leaders of the Kava are bestowed upon us our own copy of the Stone Code. It is just outside the city hall. This marks us as a town of importance and prestige. Small villagers are not so honored. All right, that's it for now, Overseer Levent. Thanks. Forgot to level this guy up, Shima. Uh, Shima will need dexterity, and uh, we'll uh, give him some blade training, uh, just some basic stuff for now. That's all we can really do. All we can afford in our our points. What is this? What's this place? Holding cells. No visitors. Fine. If you say so. What's this? Silo. Keep out. Okay. So yeah, uh, Daniel here is, uh, he's a diplomatic hand. He's a warrior. He's not uh, too, uh, you know, he's not the most intelligent of individuals, but he's uh, he's uh, wise enough to uh, recognize uh, that with all the power that he has as a hand of Avedon, that uh, he needs to be uh, diplomatic uh, at, at the least. So... There are four black stones set upright in the middle of Goldcrag. Closer inspection reveals that they are covered with dense writing. Townsfolk circle them, reading the writing and making notes of it. Those who are illiterate ask those who can read for help. These stones bear the core of the stone code, the law that governs life in the Gava. They are traditionally set here so that all can see them. All right, that's interesting. What does this stone say? That's an obelisk saying, Meeting Hall of Goldcrag. Okay. What is, what is, can we read these? I guess we can't read them. Okay. That's a shame. I'd like to know about the laws of this place. Let's enter the uh, city hall, I guess. See if there's anybody in here we can talk to, maybe. Let's see here. I've got some cells. Oh, uh, we have, uh, what's this? That's over the overseer. Uh, some scribes. Okay, that's it. Um, well, let's see if there's anything we can talk to him about now that he's inside. Maybe he needs some help with something? Uh, no. Okay. Yeah, so I'm definitely interested in seeing the merchants because there's uh, equipment that I'm missing. Some armor, maybe, uh, maybe some weapons, you know, something, you know. That's the barracks. What's over here? That's a uh, town entrance. Uh, let's see what's in the barracks. Anybody in here I can talk to? 
Now there's stuff I can steal, uh, which Daniel is not interested in. He is an honest individual. Okay, there's nobody in here. It looked like a person there for a second. It's just a cloak hanging up on the wall. All right, fair enough. Not a very busy town. Not not very many people. Understandable. Shima seems lost in thought. Something about the nearby stone seems to have shaken him. Daniel, the way of the Hulk Landa is one of honor, and that is, and uh, that is something in that in here. He pats himself on the chest. But here, but but there is something I am wondering. Yes. Each nation needs a way to control the people, so they do not rob or kill or run wild. Without control, we are no different from wretches. But that control best comes from a sense of honor, or from a set of laws. I trust in honor, and teaching the young to do right. Shima nods. That is wise. People of Hawklanda feel much the same. Thank you, Daniel. I feel more at peace. That's actually something I personally agree with. We have uh, merchants here? There are a number of merchants here, some local. Some who have just come in with the caravans. They are haggling fiercely over the goods that have been brought in to support the colonies out here. A lot of activity, all because of the presence of the dragon. None of the goods are helpful for your adventuring lifestyle. The merchants see that you aren't a customer in it and ignore you. Fair enough. Uh, where's the merchants? Uh, there's a smithy, but there's no smith. Fine provisions. Gr greetings. A small nervous man emerges from behind a rack of luxurious robes and cloaks. He's very pale, unusual for this desert. The presence of a hand of Avedon has given him a facial tick. He hello, hello. I am Tanner. This is my shop. Fine goods, as you can see. Quality, brought from as far away as a uh, Kalimder uh, Daryl. Just the thing for seeing a dragon. He lets out a strained, high-pitched laugh. <laughs> What sort of good goods do you sell? Fine goods, as you can see. Imported. Brought here in caravans. At great risk, to, risk and expense. There are fine garments you can find within 200 miles. Sorry. These are the finest garments you can find within 200 miles. That's what I wanted to say. Not a boast, just a statement of fact. What use do such luxury, luxuries have in the desert? Many come to see the dragons, important people, courtiers and diplomats, sages. They come in garments worn and dirtied by the long journey. I help them to look their best before they ask mighty Zethron for aid. Do you do much business with the locals? Oh no, they are but simple desert folk. Not that I would ever insult them. My market is in the travelers. It's dangerous to bring goods here. The free roads were the pride of the pack, but in the past, past few months they have been swarmed by the wretches. I have another question. Um, do you deal with many hands? A few. I do stock some potions and similar goods, but they tend to be more interested in Bar uh, Barak, a smithy. But you are a valued customer, and I will charge you a fair price for all the goods. That's all I ask. Uh, let's see what you have. What do you have? Okay, you have some scrolls, uh, group here, you have uh, some buffing items, okay. A cloak, which isn't too expensive, but we don't have much money right now. Some lockpicks. Now, lockpicks, we could definitely use. I'll buy one for now. <clears throat> Shima is our uh, lockpicker. Oh god, I'm picking up shit. Don't pick up shit. All right, let's find uh, Barak. Barak. Soggy cactus. That's not what we want. This must be the smithy. Uh, this courtyard has several sets of stocks set here to punish those who run afoul of the stone code. Two of them are occupied, and what little rotten fruit of uh, the village can spare has been used to pelt them. Fines and the stocks are the, are only two of the possible punishments called for by the stone code 
shunning, branding, amputation, and execution are also covered. Shima frowns. They must have done something very serious to have their dignity stripped away. This should uh, this sort of thing should be kept private. Indeed. Here's the smithy and the smith. You meet the blacksmith of Goldcrag. He's a massively built, swarthy man, and a set of tools hang from his belt. He is tending to his shop right now, not his forge. And you can um, you can understand his not wanting to be hammering red hot metal in this heat. He shakes your hand. Welcome, hand of A wait, sorry. <sighs> Welcome, hand of Avanad. I am Barak. I am more than happy to supply your kind. I have been doing it for years. Uh, yeah, I can understand him not wanting to tend the forge out in the heat like that because I can tell you, uh, I did uh, steel uh, fabrication uh, outdoors. I, I used to work in uh, a uh, construction trade, and uh, you know I used to cut and fabricate uh, steel and stuff, weld, and uh, it was actually in the D Washington D.C. area. And in Washington D.C., it gets incredibly humid outside, like so humid that you walk outside and it's like you're walking into soup or something, you know. And when you weld, I mean, when you first strike your arc when you're welding outside like that in that heat. Sweat just rolls down your face. You know what I mean? It's 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 something. It's crazy how 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 it works. You know what I mean? Just that heat, that, that sudden heat from from welding causes the sweat on your forehead to just drip down like a waterfall. It's it's nuts. So anyway, that's that's my story of heat. Um, I'd like to trade with you. Of course, I can sell you my humble craft. And I can purchase equipment you can recover in your travels. All of my prices are, I think you will find, very fair. That seems fair. He nods. Let me know when I can show you what I have. Let me see your wares. What do you have for me? <clears throat> I don't really want to buy any armor because I'm pretty confident we're going to be finding armor around. Uh, what I'm interested in is uh ranged weapons uh i need a i would like to find a bow maybe you don't okay well he is a smith he's a smith he's not a bowyer so that makes sense uh maybe uh you can buy a steel razor disc for uh shima yeah kind of upgrade uh shima's uh ranged capabilities here he actually doesn't even have any ranged Weapons, that's good. Okay, so that's it. That's all I want for now. Uh, let's uh, take a look around some more, I guess. Uh, that, unfortunately, is going to be today's episode. Uh, let's take a look around town. Cactus Hacker. There's several people here hacking back the thicket of cacti. They wear heavy gloves and crude cloth masks over their face. With slow, methodical blows, they chop loose the cacti and carry them back to the fire to burn them. The smoke that pours from the flame is black and foul. It is a miserable job, but it, is probably, it probably beats having Goldcrag uh, be overblown. That's strange. Why wouldn't they use, why wouldn't they use the cacti for, for, for water? I'm pretty sure you can... I mean, this is a fantasy world, obviously, but... You know, I'm pretty sure that all cacti, or most cacti, uh, the, you can just drink the water, you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay, we sense the caravan guards. We, looks like we got a bartender here. Uh, and we have some people to talk to, so uh, I'll talk to them. This inn is surprising luxurious for its location, far out in the wilds of the Gava. The travelers who go to visit the travelers who go to visit the dragon must demand quality accommodations. The bar is being tended by a young woman who is wiping out pewter mugs with a mostly clean towel. She nods to you. Welcome, Hand of Avedon. I am Meth, and this is our inn. Can I get a room? I am sorry, but they are full, even the common rooms. It is because of the troubles. Return to the arrival of the pal. Okay, troubles with the wretches. Merchants and travelers wait here for longer so that they can band in larger groups before they can travel. I have other questions. I could use a drink. 
Okay, nothing I wanted really, just wanted to say. Have you heard any rumors? She suddenly appears rather cagey. Oh, I hear many things. It's so hard to tell what might be useful. Uh, well, tell me something you think might be helpful. She thinks, I overheard someone recently who had just returned from the dragon's cave. He said that a shadowy human was hiding in the thickets. Didn't get a good look. The fellow looked him over and ran off. Might be a bandit. You should watch out if you head out there. All right, thanks. Okay. And Natalie looks around the inn, but she seems disappointed. Inns are normally a fine place to find work for hire, but uh, this does not look promising. Still, you might ask around. Uh, what do we have? Seeker Azarni. Okay. This, there is a Hulk London maid sitting at this, uh, this long table, sipping a goblet of wine and reading a scroll. When you get close, she inspects you. Lacking an obvious reason to dismiss you, she motions for you to sit. I am Seeker Azarni, she says. Normally I prefer solitude on my journey, but it is always wise to carry favor with hands when you have the chance. You're from Hulk Landa? I am. She sips her mug. How was the journey? Long. Many miles on free roads. At one point, I had to use my talents to burn away some attacking wretches foolish enough to try to rob us. Why'd you come? The dragon? There's no other possible reason for me to come here. What are you reading? Magical formulae that are, I am sure, of no interest or value to you. I've got another question. Uh, have you come to see the dragon? I have. I'll join a caravan to Zethron's area soon. I'll ask the dragon for help. What are you trying to learn? She frowns. That is an impolite question. None ever reveal why they seek the dragon unless they have to. To do so would remove some of the advantage gained. Azarni has no interest in talking to you right now. A few more weeks in this wasteland might make her more willing to talk. Okay. Well, she was a bit rude, to say the least. Uh, you know, I'll go back to her just in case, you know, maybe... Oh, look, there's another guy here. This man is sitting in the shadows uh, in the back room of the inn, sipping water from a wooden bowl. A half-eaten loaf of bread sits on a nearby table. His leather clothes and bone pendants mark him as from the wild realm. He's come a long way. He looks up at you and says, Greetings. You ask his name, Alphonse. Uh, you ask if you can sit. He says simply, I wish to be alone. Can we talk? I prefer solitude. I mean no offense. Please leave me. There is nothing to say to that. You leave him alone. Okay, so there's some, some mysterious figures here in the inn. That's for sure. Hmm, there's a cellar here. Nah, I don't want to break into anywhere. Change your care and guard. Uh, what's, what, what's in here? Is there, is there stuff down here? There's rats! There's rats! I knew it! <laughs> oh, I knew it. Alright, so, uh, Shadow... Walkers are very useful. Uh, they are capable at both ranged and melee attacks. Well, all characters except for mages, I would say, are capable at both uh, both types of combat. Uh, there we go, that's it. Any rats? Any more rats? Yes, more rats. These rats are frenzied, my goodness. Alright, he leveled up again, good. That's what we want. Uh, what, what is the prerequisite? Um... Okay. Whatever. All right. Maybe we're not supposed to be down here. That's fine. Let's go back up. Okay. Let's go talk to the seeker once again.
Uh, I'd like to know more of Hawklanda. She looks at Shima and curls her lip in, in, in distaste. Ask him. I'm sure the banished one can tell you all you need to know. Shima remains completely expressionless. Yes, some of us pay close attention to who of our land joins with Avedon. I know of you. All that I wish to. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah, all right. That's it. That's it. Um. Doesn't seem. It doesn't seem like the the townsfolk are very. Uh, not not too welcoming. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, so we have uh, many ways to go, and uh, we will uh, go those many ways uh, next video. So I'm going to end it here, and I'll see you guys next time.